I'm Ruth Brandon and I want to tell you about my new book, Ugly Beauty. It's about the beauty business and I got interested in that because unlike clothes, cosmetics are very political. Home lines go up and down, silhouettes vary, it's just a matter of fashion. But what we put on our faces, or rather these days what we put into them, reflects who's in charge, socially. When women are second-class citizens, as they were in the 19th century, their makeup is often discouraged. Nice women don't paint. But then at the beginning of the 20th century, lipstick became a symbol of women's emancipation, and the beauty business became a gold mine. The first person to realize this was a poor Polish Jewish immigrant called Helena Rubinstein. She opened her first salon in 1901 in Melbourne, Australia. And by 1907, she'd become a millionaire and was ready to take on the world and move to Europe and America. In both her person and her bank balance, Rubinstein symbolized what makeup could do for a woman. Meanwhile, in Paris, a very different cosmetics business was also taking off. L'Oreal was the world's first harmless hair dye. It was formulated by a young chemist, Eugène Schuller, and he too soon became immensely rich. As Schuller's business expanded, he became interested in politics. He thought a state should be run like a successful business, by a strong leader with no interference from underlings, and that women should stay in their place, at home, dyeing their hair, and looking after their husbands and their many children. When the Germans occupied France in 1940, Schiller saw this as a heaven-sent opportunity to push his fascist ideas into practice. And when the war ended, he was tried as a collaborator. But he got off, and like many others, his collaboration was forgotten as L'Oréal expanded in the post-war boom. By the time he died in 1957, it had become, as it still is, one of the most important businesses in France. In 1988, L'Oreal took over Helena Rubinstein. By then, cosmetics were no longer a symbol of freedom. They'd come to symbolise a society where women were nurses, but never doctors, secretaries, but never bosses. In these uncertain times, when no one knows if they're going to have a job tomorrow, be the only one in the room with wrinkles. Ugly Beauty tells the story of Schiller, Rubinstein and the beauty business. It's an extraordinary story and all yours for less than the price of a good lipstick.